Here's the condensed version of how to tweak formats and branding using FrameMaker's publishing pod. First, open up your FrameMaker content and navigate to the publishing pod using File Publish if necessary. In the publishing pod, confirm the scope of the publish. You can see here that I've already created settings and then saved them so that I can simply show you the results. Next, click the Change Settings button and choose Edit. Navigate to the Style Mapping tab, and in your Paragraph Styles, we'll address three different types of content, Headings, Body Copy, and Lists. For Headings, first determine which headings will split into new topics based upon the paragraph tag name. Select those topics, click the checkbox for Split into Topics, and then choose an output style of Heading 1. You'll notice for my headings I've chosen to ignore the auto number, which makes it easier overall to manage formatting in digital content across multiple devices. I'll treat my Heading 2's the same way, and my Heading 3's I'll set to be Heading 2 in my output, but not split into topics based on style. Next, for the body copy, I'll set my main body copy style and choose the body level 1 format, which is one of my default choices. For other indented content, I'll choose body level 2 or body level 3 as appropriate. For my numbered and bulleted lists, I'll choose their formats, choose body level 1, 2, or 3, depending on a first, second, or third level list, and then in auto number, choose to convert to HTML list. Next we'll go to character styles and do roughly the same thing. Here I've set my link text character tag to use the web jump style provided by FrameMaker by default. For both paragraph tags and character tags, you can choose to map to a custom CSS. See the blog post accompanying this movie for details. It's a good idea to remove formatting from tables and use the CSS formatting as well. I recommend using one of the simpler formats including cell border and simple border. For cross-reference formats, I tend to take all of my formats and replace them simply with an output style of paratext. Most of the formatting information won't make sense in a digital environment, so replacing with paratext gives me something that I can easily test and then format as needed if it's not enough information. Finally, in general settings, there are some nice options to add all topics to the table of contents, to set up glossary entries based upon markers in your document, and the ability to set up DHTML effects based upon specific paragraph and character tags used in your doc. Now over to the Outputs tab. On my General tab, you can see that I've customized the title, and I'll also add a favicon, or a custom graphic that will show in the URL bar inside of my browser. For this graphic, just choose a square graphic, saved in either ping, GIF, or ICO format. In the Manage Layout setting, choose from your available formats, and if you want to customize, then click on the Wrench button and choose Edit. In the Layout Customization dialog, note that not only can you choose a base font, but you can choose to show or hide Table of Contents, Index, Glossary, and Filtering icons. Here I've set the Index, Glossary, and Filter to False to omit them from the output. Next, in the Header section, I've got the ability to omit the header from a mobile phone representation, along with setting my title text color. Remember that the title itself was set on an earlier screen. I can choose a custom logo, and for this I can choose any square image in a ping format. When I identify that graphic on my machine, FrameMaker will resize it as needed and rename it logo.ping and store it within your project. Finally, I've chosen a background color that complements the graphic. Make sure you take time to go through the other layout components available. Each gives you a way to customize one or more graphics, colors, or layout options, along with legends down below with buttons that link to the properties themselves. When you're done with your customization options, choose Close. Make sure you choose an appropriate save option at the bottom to exit the dialog. To speed up processing, I'll change the focus of my publish to general description and output my responsive HTML5 content. Viewing the output, we can see that the desktop layout 
takes advantage of many of the features that we set. Changing to the tablet layout, most of the formatting is preserved and the navigation is slightly different to optimize for tablet navigation. When we drop down to a mobile phone size, the header itself disappears, but the other navigation functions remain intact. For more detail, including a walkthrough of creating mobile applications from the same Framemaker content, please see the three accompanying blog posts.